Bowtie Treasures, how's everybody doing tonight? It's Saturday night, we're back, ready to paint, ready to demonstrate, ready to hang out together, share ideas, talk about painting. Guys, make sure as you pop in, you say hi, let me know where you're watching from. So tonight I have a lot of things that we could talk about as far as products, and I'm gonna focus tonight on gilding wax. I have this gorgeous vanity desk behind me that I have been working on for a few days and I want to keep going with it and really I'm going all out glam on this one. I haven't done one of these kind of glam super shiny metallic pieces in a while so this is the one I'm going to work on. In fact I already have I cleaned it, bossed it with Gray Boss, put a base coat, we put a aubergine, a base coat of aubergine, and then blended in Mason Dixon Gray. Anyways, what I'd like to do, if you don't mind, is watch a few minutes of me blending. I'm going to walk you through it so you can see how we got to these panels blended. And I'm going to voice over, if you will, and then when we come back, we'll jump into stenciling and adding some gilding wax and things like that. So it's kind of different, but I think it would allow me to put that blending element into this video, share that part. If you have any questions, now would be a good time to ask about the blending. And I want to showcase uh, one of the brushes I'll be showcasing is Dixie Bell's new and upcoming uh, Le Petit natural brush. Really loved it. And I'm going to be using that on the live. I also will be using, uh, I used a flat small, and I believe I was using the oval small. Those are the three main brushes I used during the blending. So that's what I'm gonna go, going to do. And uh, go, so good to see you guys dropping in and saying hi. That's really awesome. And so let, let me do that. Let me see if this all is going to work for us. So there we go right there and I'm going to talk over. So first of all, you can see I've, I'm applying aubergine on the top drawer and I had already done some dry uh, first round blending just to kind of test it out. So I have right now I'm just applying aubergine to the drawer and really thin or it more thin towards the middle. And then I'm going to switch over to the flat small brush with some of the Mason Dixon gray and I'm going to just put it just a little bit in the middle and at that point I'm going to then use the Le Petit brush and you can use any other brush that you feel comfortable with blending and I'm just moving that paint around and that's what I'm doing there on the middle drawer so just kind of creating a little bit of a glow to that to that main section and once I'm happy with that blend I'm going to move on to the uh, lower section there. I'm just taking a hair out of the drawer and then we're going to do the same to the bottom drawer. Now, before this point, I actually went ahead and put aubergine all the way around the drawer and I saved the middle for last on the front. So here uh, at this point, I'm just getting ready with the next color and I'm spritzing with this, just a misting bottle and I'm applying the aubergine color right now with the oval small, one of my favorite brushes that I use. And you can, again, you can see I've already did on the video, I already did a little bit of a dry run. I'm just getting all the paint on there, misting it one more time. Now I'm coming over the, the original first round of blending, the test run, and I'm just painting the aubergine over that. In the middle, I'm not putting a lot of paint, just enough to get the, the surface wet, add a little paint. I did not want the Mason Dixon Gray to be potent, meaning I wanted to have it a little bit toned down with the aubergine color. So right there, you can see in the video, the aubergine is covering the whole area. Now I'm just coming in, I'm, I'm indicating that I'm gonna use my fist kind of as my guide. I'm just making a swirl of Mason Dixon Gray there in the middle. And that's all I did, just a little bit of paint. Now I'll come back with the La Petite brush. It has a nice feathered edge. And now I'm just kind of going in a circle to soften it down and uh, just blend it into the aubergine, nice and soft, kind of cloudy, soft glow, vignette would be another word you might use. And so that's what I'm doing in that section. Just go ahead, 
You can even do little swirls around it if you want, but whatever you need to do is get that a nice soft glow. That's, that's all I did. And once you're done, that's where I stopped before tonight is to leave it just as nice. And notice I'm going around the hardware because when I put the hardware in there, it's gonna kind of be the center of focus when I'm all done. So that's, that's the, the step there. And once I'm happy with it, just kind of touching a couple more times, don't overwork it. You can kind of tell when it gets sticky that you need to be done. The uh, blending part, I thought that would be nice just to go over that real quick because I, I, I couldn't have this wet and do the stenciling tonight. So we're gonna move on. On top of, on top of this gradient, we're gonna stencil. And the nice thing about the stencil is it kind of hides some of those perfections. It's, it gives you a little bit of a, Sleight of hand is the wrong word, but it just gives you a little bit of distractor to that. So that's that's what we're gonna do. There we go, you see it. It's a really big stencil. It's great because it can cover large surfaces and small or great. Now, in order to do this, I'm gonna be using Dixie Bell's newer, the stencil is fairly new and the gilding wax is fairly new. Uh, there we go. Anyways, we're going to, uh, then I wouldn't like to use the right, the, the, this is the round small. Notice that the end of the brush is blunt. So I'm gonna be using that to our advantage. What I decided to do, if I could find where I was gonna be earlier, is about right there. I'd like for the hole of the top knob to be the center of our piece. So here's, this is the gold. And the gold is my favorite and it looks so good with the, um, with the sil uh, gold, silver and violet. And I'm just going to put a little bit of a touch on the brush, not much. Okay, so I'm not putting a lot and we're going to just highlight. You can look at the transfer for diff different cues as to where things are. Maybe where both of a, t a point is. Just find a place, a reference point where you can know that everything's gonna be lined up the way you want. And then I'm just gonna start very softly blending in the middle, okay? That's, that's all we're gonna do. And I'm just gonna touch, if you need to, you can unload it onto another surface. And you can even squeeze the bristles of the brush a little tighter, depending on what you like to use. You can use a stencil brush. I'm just using all these great Dixie Bell products to illustrate how you can pull this off. And now keep in mind, you can put this gilding wax on after you top coat if you want. I have not top coated yet. So this is a point checking how far you went on each side of the stencil. I'd like for them to be faded, but I don't, so I'm not going totally to the edge. Let's take a look. Okay, that's what we're looking for. I think that doesn't that look great. It just really gives it a nice, nice feel. Okay. Now what I can do is I'm going to. Put it back where it was. It, I'm not going over that area again. I'm just using it for reference. It's totally up to you if you want to keep this going. Nobody's going to be checking to the bottom to see if it lines up, but I liked how it gave me a good, nice center of focus down below. So I'm going to hold down down below. You're welcome to tape this off. And I'm looking to see where my hard my, my holes are about right in here. You can tape this off if you want. I just found that um, since I'm gonna be moving around a lot, it was just easier to hold it. But if your arms start killing you, <laughs> I could see taping it off might work better. So again, I'm not, I don't want to have a hard edge. I'm not going to the edge. I'm just putting a metallic glow 
around my, my blending I did earlier. And that's one reason why I, I had to get the blending done before tonight because you don't really want to blend over wet paint. Now because you can line this up pretty good, I can always pull it off and see how I'm doing. Just, I think I would like to have a little bit more here and above the top, so let's put that right back where, where I had it. And again, I'm going to use the top as my reference point. It's not very, it's, since it's not wet, it's not, it doesn't hurt you to lightly, gently touch it here and there. But for what I'm doing, it does, it's a big help to be able to go back, like pull it off and see what needs to be done still. Because sometimes it is a little harder to see through the stencil what you've done. And I want a little bit more at the top. So I'm just going around a circle. I think that's pretty good. I hope that helps you get an idea of how you can really add some, um, having, having some accent, having some design added to it. And I think that will really help. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna turn my piece just a little bit so you all can see the side. Same technique, but this is gonna be a larger space. And I'm gonna see if I can, and I found it really nice today that I could almost center this piece by, and again, I'm looking at the stencil and I just put the stencil up at the top and that's going to allow me to keep it nice and straight. I could at this point, I could tape it if that would help. And um, so I want a vignette. I may not come as high, but I want to be somewhere around, around in here. And I'm going to move over here so I can see what I'm doing. And notice I'm doing, see how I'm doing the swirling marks, swirling pattern. That allows me to spread that gilding wax in a soft way. With, and I've, and it allows me to spread the gilding wax around. If you put too much on there, you can let it dry and do a little light sanding with the finishing pad or a sanding pad. Sometimes the sanding does give it a nice distressed look and that's something you can try as well. The key here is vignetting soft and not too much chalk paint, not too much gilding wax chalk paint. I, w I thought about doing, I had demonstrated several months ago about how to do this with Moonshine Metallics and an airbrush, but I didn't want to get too distracted from showcasing the Dixie Bell products because this works really well. So we're going to take this off, see where we are. Okay, now by the way, if you watched the video earlier in my demonstration, I toned the sides down from what was on the video. And I think that looks just right. As you can see, it's not too, not too complicated. Just a, a matter of a little bit of elbow grease and work if you will so that's that's something you have to just kind of keep an eye on and I think we're good there and when they were done with this I, I really want y'all to stick around and take a look at the mirror too I'd like to put some gilding wax on the mirror but we'll not use this technique I'm not using the stencil on the mirror I do have to reference the original side or the other side to make sure I know how far out. I don't want too much um, uniqueness between the two. I want those, the piece to stay very symmetrical. So use the other side as a reference. But, to, but don't get so crazy that it has to be super perfect. It is, you're being artistic to a certain degree. There we go. Nice, um, nice look overall. Keep this part. 
project moving. So in just a minute, I'm gonna pull this off. You need to see how I'm doing with the other side. And we're pretty close. I'm very happy with that. So now the only other thing that I really want to do at this point is I'd like to decorate and highlight some of the details. You can come in here. I don't know if you can tell how much um, gold is I have put on my finger, but if you have too much, like if you want to touch just an edge, just be careful. So that's one way of applying it. Again, you can, you can do a brush too. Probably a number of things that you can use on that. But I like to hit some of these rings. And that makes a nice accent as well. But when you compare that to the one that we did already, or the earlier one, no no highlights versus one that is it really makes a difference and sometimes i just have to experiment with how much and how little feel the piece out if you will i think that looks a little bit better to have more of i don't know if this is officially called but i do like having a little bit of that filled in that's a nice look. The other thing that you might try, and we're just highlighting a few areas, is you could also hit some, hit the corners, or even the whole edge. There are actually six gilding waxes. Zinc, black, copper, bronze and silver and I'm using gold. Gold's definitely my favorite. So you can see how I'm just hitting the edges. I mentioned before I have not top coated yet. You can do this after or before top coating. Just make I the other place I want to touch right is in here. This little leaf decoration. That's great to accent little details like that. And do the other side. I had I had just I had thought about doing something with this little panel, but I really, you know, I, I try to put my mind in the, in the myself in the mind of the person who decided to just have that panel. I'm not sure what they what reasoning they had for just having a, a straight panel here. Nothing's missing. And I really didn't want to put a wood you bend, although I could. So I'm just going to decorate it with a little bit of gold. You will find if you're used to the old the old gilding wax, it was a little easier to remove if you didn't like where you put it. But this one's really so potent, you have to be careful. And that's another reason why you might decide to put it the, the gilding wax on after you top coat. I'm just used to doing it before, so, and it's okay. Let me show you the mirror. I have Notice the blending on it as well. Do you see how right here, I went from Mason Dixon Gray, blended it into Aubrey Sheen. And I really like how that came out and love the, love the result. So let's take a look. The, the biggest thing with Mason Dixon is deciding if the gold is going to work up against the grayish bluish tone. So let's take a look here. I think it'll be fine. So again, using my finger, catching the edges. This is where a brush probably would be helpful. Let me go grab a brush. I think it's good to showcase different ways to do it. So let's try a brush. 
because there's a couple areas I don't think my finger will get in there. So I just took a craft brush now and I'm going to go up in here where my finger couldn't reach. Now you can do this idea with moonshine metallics and things like that. It just depends on how much metallics you want and how potent you need them to be. Like the moonshine's gonna be thinner, but you might want that. So I love the fact that I can experiment with how much and how potent I want this to be. Keep in mind that this mirror, when I put it on the vanity, it's gonna be you know, above your head, so you don't have to feel like you have to go too crazy with it, but just fill it out, decide how much and how little you want to get on there. So we've used a brush to apply stencil. I've used my finger to apply gilding wax. We've pretty much, we've covered a lot of ways to put this gilding wax on. It's a great product. If you don't have, if you've not tried it before, you need to. Okay, I'm darkening it up so you can see it better because the highlights are, to get it light enough, it's a little tricky to balance that out and let me bring in on a little bit of this gold section on on a piece so let me get you a loop over here as little or as much of this as you want I'm really excited to see it coming all, all coming together I did a vanity, I don't know, maybe one, two, it was last year, I think, and it was purple and gold. I thought I went a little too far with it. It did take a little longer to sell, but I thought it was fantastic. I finally did get a, a good buyer. And we're, I'm only about three hours away from Louisiana, so I figured some Louisiana LSU fan would love it. Anyways, it was just beautiful. And I couldn't help myself doing the purple and gold again. It just really was calling my name. Now on this part, you can keep going with a brush or switch back to it, your finger if you want. Now, the one thing the finger, my finger is doing is putting on a little thicker, where a brush is gonna be a little bit more softer because the brush can't hold as much, can't hold that line and that pigment as well. And it might be even kind of nice to fade this gold out what I mean by that is not go gold all the way up. Like, I don't know what it would be like if we did that. Kind of let the eye, let the fade pull the eye down. And I'm just going over it one more time to kind of soften it out. One of the things that we need to decide on is, while we're here, maybe we can, some of you again just, just joined us. You can see the side. And the gilding wax is being mixed together to create new color. I certainly hope so. They're not easy. I mean, they're so thick. They're not easy to... It's not like you're mixing liquid. You're mixing more of a paste. But if you have a, a great way to mix paste... In fact, the instructions when you get it says stir before using. So if you can stir it, and that's, that is, by the way, that's stirred with a stick, then I would imagine you could probably scrape some out and mix it together. I wouldn't mix it with paint, but I would you can mix it with silver if you wanted to.
I just love how this the details get popped out like that. Yeah, mix it on the plate, probably with a little little mixing palette knife. And by the way, it, next time you see this, there's a good chance, there's a, a chance that I might actually do some shading on this. I have not decided yet. I just knew I couldn't do any shading. I couldn't do the shading and all the other stuff. So I might come back and do some shading. But that should not get in the way of what I'm doing right now. But we'll see. There you go with the whole uh, view of the piece. And you can even see it with less lighting and even lit up. So it just depends on how the light's gonna hit it, how it's gonna look. But I hope that helps give you some idea of the versatility of gilding wax and multiple ways to apply it to your project. Hopefully you can uh, follow me on social media, on Instagram or Facebook. Also check out the YouTube channel and love for you to see how things are going over there and sign up for my newsletter. That's always great. All right, take care. You guys do something creative while you're out there and thanks so much for watching. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.